Hi, this is Helena Hart, and I'm so excited to be talking with Madeline Charles today. She is a licensed psychotherapist and relationship coach who helps people overcome relationship anxiety and become more securely attached so they can attract that man and relationship they've always wanted. And we are talking about such an important topic today. We're gonna to be discussing that missing link that prevents women from really attracting that man that they want and uh, that thing that prevents him from coming close and staying close. And Madeline is just a wealth of knowledge. I'm so excited to introduce her to my community. So welcome Madeline and thank you so much for talking with me again today. Oh my gosh, yes, Lena. I really appreciate being here. I'm really excited to chat with you as well. Yes. Oh my gosh. This, we were chatting a little bit before we started recording and I am so excited to share this information with you guys because I've been getting a lot of requests for more videos on this topic in particular. And let's just jump right in. What is that missing piece that prevents women from attracting that man they want and not just attracting him, but like keeping him and, and like developing more intimacy and closeness in the relationship? Yes. So this missing link, ladies, listen up. <laughs> so it is something I call your attraction blueprint. And this is something that is really kind of hardwired in us from early development. And it's something that unless you really understand what it is, it's going to be cropping up and getting in the way of you attracting and keeping a stable, secure, emotionally available, you know, high quality man. So I this love it. I love this idea of the attraction blueprint. I've never heard anyone put it that way before. So I'm super excited. So for everyone watching who might not be familiar with this concept, what is that? And, and maybe like, how does it develop and, and play out in our relationships? Yeah. Yeah. So another way to think about this, if you've heard of attachment style, that's really what I'm talking about here. So there's a few you know, core components. Um, there is the anxious dating style. I don't really love that word. So I like to think about it more of a pursuer. Um, and so that's someone who, you know, you really are available for someone like you would love to have someone in your life. And as soon as you come across someone you're interested in, things start to go a little haywire. You know, you might be really calm and confident and full of self-worth in other areas of your life. But as soon as that guy comes in that you have an attraction to, it's like, whew. <laughs> um, you know, you might start displaying some, um, some, some behaviors like, you know, scrolling his social media or reviewing your texts with him or really second guessing, like, should I reach out to him first? I don't want him to think I'm not interested. Or, you know, did I say the right thing? Am I, am I too much? Am I not enough? And all of these insecurities can start to crop up that you didn't even know you had. Totally. So oh my gosh. I'm just like cracking up over here because we've all been there, right? Or at least I know I have been a lot of women who, who come and watch my videos here on YouTube or have some of my programs or are, have this anxious attachment style going on for themselves. I can certainly relate to that for sure. Where it's like this constant kind of second guessing themselves, replaying uh, past conversations and like this tracking of the connection very closely, sometimes much more closely than uh, the, how a man's tracking it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You're really kind of um, you know, keeping note of every little movement he does, every move he makes, and you're what we can often end up doing is putting this person on a pedestal. And so what I'd like to say is keep a sense of curiosity, right? Like as much as you can try to catch yourself when you maybe want to go into fantasy mode, when you maybe want to jump ahead and think, oh my gosh, this might be the one, you know, when can I introduce him to everyone? Like when are you going to be official and really kind of slowing yourself down and staying in the moment, kind of staying in the step you're in, in the dating and relationship process. Wow. I mean, that's just, the, I don't even know if you know this, that's like totally a huge hallmark of a lot of my concepts and ideas is we tend to put a man on a pedestal, right? And then what do we do? We want to like prove ourselves to him and try and win him over, even in these very subtle ways that we think aren't coming out in our vibe and energy, but they, of course they are, right? A man can feel that if we've put him on a pedestal. And I love what you said about slowing down. Another thing I talk about all the time, because when we're feeling anxious, we want to speed up and we want to like do things and like grasp at a man, even in on these very kind of like subtle subconscious levels. So I love that where, I mean, wherever you want to take this, cause I know you have so much to share on this topic. What can a woman do if she finds herself in that situation where she's like overthinking things? I get questions all the time on how to stop overthinking and like feel more secure and less anxious in dating and relationships. 
Mm, that is a great question. Yeah. So the first step is once you kind of notice yourself getting triggered and the insecurity is cropping up, you're starting the tracking that you're speaking about, Helena. It's a really great practice to come into compassion, to recognize that there is a part of you that is being activated and that stems from the attraction blueprint, right? So having that understanding of, oh, that's my blueprint coming up. So when you can start to soothe that part of yourself that is starting to question and wonder and second guess and, um, you know, just kind of remind her, like, you're so good, right? Like, I have nothing to prove. I am so worthy and whole. And so when you can kind of start to make that out of self-soothing practice, that's where, you know, that urgency to pick up the phone and text or check is going to start to subside. So great. That is so great. How does this relate to the attraction blueprint concept that you have? Like, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Are there different kinds of blueprints or are there certain like categories that people can fit into? I'd love to hear all your thoughts on that. Yeah. So I was talking about the one that I primarily specialize in, which is that anxious or pursuer blueprint. There's also the distancer one, right? Or avoidant. And so as you guys might know, those two are often like magnets. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so understanding the dynamics of those blueprints is going to help you have some conceptualization for, oh, that's why my dating patterns have been this way. That's why my relationships maybe in the past haven't lasted. And it's going to help you understand, I want to bring a man close and I want to keep him close. So what do I need to tweak about my blueprint in order to make that happen, right? Because the thing about the attraction blueprints is you may have been hardwired with this, but you can absolutely modify them, right? Like they're not set in stone. And so that's the exciting thing about all this. I love that. And just out of my own curiosity, can you be one, can you like lean towards one blueprint with a certain kind of man? Like, can you be more avoidant with a certain kind of man? Who, Cause I feel like that might be the other side of the coin, right? If we are attracted to men who are kind of distancers are avoidant, if a guy shows up and he's just loving us to death and wanting to give, give us everything we want. My experience was I wasn't, I wasn't initially turned on or attracted to that kind of man. I wanted to, to distance myself because that didn't feel safe. It didn't feel familiar. What are your thoughts on that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is such a great point. That often happens. I mean, I have had experience of that as well, where it, you know, you might feel like this guy's just too nice or I don't feel an attraction. I'm bored because we're used to feeling that push pull dynamic. We're used to like that spot, like we mistake the push pull for fire and passion and so part of rewiring that attraction blueprint is starting to see the safe, stable, secure behaviors in a man as something that we want to invite in. And that's what's going to help keep that man close. Oh my gosh, totally. I, I feel like I just want to do like a hundred more videos with you already. I have so many ideas. Yeah, I used to be like, like now I'm like totally turned on by what a man feels for me, right? <laughs> Whereas before it was the opposite. The man kind of was like coming on too strong, which would look like normal pursuing, just being consistent and reliable and stable. That would turn me off. And I would kind of not be interested in that kind of guy because it didn't feel familiar to me. I talk about this so much in a lot of my videos where if a guy showed up who just kind of fit right into my old relationship patterns, like that would turn me on. My feelings for him would stir up all these kind of like highs, these like chemical highs in my brain. And I'd want to, like you said, put him on a pedestal, go after him. So I have my own ideas, of course, about how, how I turned all of that around, but I would love to hear from you. Like, how does a woman go from having the, the uh, kind of anxious attraction blueprint to more uh, securely attached? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the big components is building a sense of confidence, like real deep self-worth. So the more outlets you have for connection, the more outlets you have for self-care, that's going to help you feel like a well-rounded, you know, fulfilled woman. So that when that man does come into your life, he's not the end all be all source of happiness and attention and validation. Right. So you know, the more you can just nurture all areas and kind of maintain those boundaries for yourself. Like if you do come in contact with a man and he is wanting to pursue you, maintaining the things that are important in your life, right? Like not putting them all to the wayside and making this guy number one right away, right? Like you had described the tracking, like maintaining the pacing that he is presenting to you. 
I love that's that. Like not, not getting ahead and trying to like, um, I talk about this. I have this program called uh, the art of getting the commitment you want where, where a woman can be way down the line. I call it the relationship roadmap where she can be way over here and the guy's still like on mile marker one, so to speak. And she's trying to pull him along, trying to catch him up to where she is. So it can be easy to get overly invested because of our like strong feelings for a guy, right? We, we get excited. We're not attracted to that many men, maybe. So we kind of put all our hopes and dreams on this one guy, <laughs> this one situation. And a, a man can feel that, right? And, and that's the opposite of what inspires him to keep showing up and pursuing her and wanting to kind of like lock her down in, into a committed relationship. So yeah, any other tips on how to, like what to do if you do get anxious, you do start to overthink? I love everything you're sharing. Yeah, you know, I think, I think the first thing is to notice like, okay, this is coming up for me. Like the more you understand your attraction blueprint, the more you're gonna understand like this is my pattern and it's, it's not even contingent on who this guy is. It's more so about me and starting to differentiate these are the patterns and the red flags and things that start to come up in me that I need to heal and look at. And then what are the, the boundaries and the values and the things that I'm looking for in a partner so that as those things are being displayed, I can start to sift out like, what is something that I actually want to set a boundary around or speak up about a need I want to get met versus like when I'm feeling needy and clingy, like those are very different things. And so the more you can tease those out and understand like what's coming from you versus what's up in the relationship as a whole, that's going to help you, you know, just look at it with a pair of fresh eyes. Yeah. It's kind of like zooming out and being an observer of what's like objectively going on rather than I, I totally get that. I love that. Do you, I'm sure with, with your clients, like do inner work to heal some of these things. Do you have anything, any kind of specific tool? I don't want to put you on the spot here. I'm just curious <laughs> because it's something we, we, we all struggle with sometimes or most of us at least, right. Who kind of tend towards being more anxious and overthinking. Is there, do you have any kind of like quick inner work type thing that a woman could do like at a moment's notice when she's starting to, to catch herself doing that? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I definitely love supporting my clients with that inner work, especially parts work, like understanding that there is that anxious younger part of you that is needing your reassurance and your validation. So for instance, you know, cause this is also something that I've worked through for myself. And so I love teaching my clients is if you notice something coming up in your body and I love to start with that, right? Like what's happening from the neck down? Like, how do you notice when you're starting to get anxious and kind of triggered and insecure, you know, you can put a hand on your heart and just close your eyes and breathe into that and ask yourself what's coming up right now. What am I needing? And it might be, Oh my gosh, I'm afraid. Did I say too much? Did I lose him? Is he pulling away? And you can just start to check in and say, you're good. You know, I got you, you're here, I'm here. And we're going to ground into this so that no matter what's happening outside of ourselves, we're going to kind of resource right now so that we can show up for this relationship from our kind of like mature whole self. I like that a lot. I talk so much about like taking your focus off of the guy and what he's thinking and where are things going and does he like me and, and bringing it back to yourself, like pulling all that energy off of him and bringing it back to yourself, which of course draws him into you because everything is energy, right? So that was beautiful. And this was really amazing. I feel like we should do so many more videos on this topic. I just wanted to introduce Madeline to my audience and uh, you, I know we want to talk about your free summit, right? That I'm going to be a part of. I'm super excited about that. It's totally free. The link's in the description right now and in the comment section. So tell everyone about your summit that you have going on because I think it's, it's for women with this specific issue, right? That's right. Yeah. So it's called the irresistible woman. We're talking about attracting lasting love this year with confidence and ease. So that's huge. That's everything we're talking about today. And the summit is different than most. I know you guys probably get a lot of summit invites, but what really differentiates this is we are targeting those women that feel anxious and insecure are, you know, really preoccupied with wanting to make sure that man stays close. So we're going to be targeting everything we talked about today in so much more depth. So I really encourage you to join us. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it totally free, right? Free for everyone in my community. I'm going to be a part of it. So you guys can catch my interview. I'm super excited. I know you have a lot of amazing experts. So the link is in the description right now. Anything else you want to share, Madeline, before we close out, any last tips for women who are kind of uncovering their own attraction blueprint and are wanting to shift things in like a permanent way in their love life? Hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I just want to say like it can be really helpful when you do an inventory of your relationship patterns. You know, like why haven't things lasted? And just to just take an honest, non-judgmental, compassionate look at like what are some of the patterns that you're the common denominator of? And really taking ownership of that is the first step and then recognizing that you have complete ability to shift that. So <laughs> I love it. I think that's so great. I'm so excited to like listen to all the amazing interviews myself. This is something that we just like, it, we just need those constant reminders sometimes, right? It's just kind of like this lifelong process of learning and going deeper within yourself and getting these like amazing tools that can really like help support you have the, have the kind of relationship you want. So thank you so much, Madeline. Again, everyone, the link to her free summit, which I'm going to be a part of along with some other amazing experts is in the description right below this video. Madeline, thank you so much. And we should definitely do this again soon. Absolutely. Thank you.